Hey guys, Krosev here with Signals Everywhere, and if you're interested in doing amazing things with software-defined radio, be sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, because each and every week, I'll be bringing you a new tutorial to help you step up your SDR game. Today I'll be teaching you how to set up Dump 1090 and Virtual Radar Server so you can track aircraft in real time using a basic RTL SDR. So don't go anywhere, you're watching Signals Everywhere. Alright, so before we can get started, you need to download the Dump 1090 software as well as install the Virtual Radar Server application. This is very easy to do and I have links in the description to where you can find these. Once you have unzipped the Dump 1090 application, open the folder and we need to look for this Dump1090.bat file. Make sure your software defined radio is plugged in and go ahead and run the Dump 1090 bat. If you get this little security warning, go ahead and just press run. And this is going to go ahead and begin running the Dump 1090 software. You can see where it was able to find my software defined radio and it is now actively tracking aircraft. Now for us to be able to take this information and plot it to a map where we can see the aircraft moving in real time, we need the virtual radar server. So let's go ahead and start that up now. So this is virtual radar server. I happen to be running version 242. If you're running a newer or older version, you'll find they are very similar in the way they're set up. And it's going to be very easy for you to copy what I'm doing here. So we're just waiting for the application to start. And then we can go in and change that configuration. So now that you can see the application's up and running, all we need to do is go up to Tools, come down to Options. We're going to get a window here, and we need to go down to Receivers. And under that is a window called Receiver. From there, we can click on the wizard. And it's going to ask us, what kind of receiver do you want to connect to? Well, we want to connect to a software-defined radio. We'll hit Next. We then want to make sure that we are using Dump 1090. We'll again hit Next. And is the SDR decoder running on this computer? Yes, it is. It's currently running on this machine. We'll press Next again. And it's finished. Now, just to make sure it's working, go ahead and press the Test Connection button. If everything's working properly, you should see this window that says a connection can be made with these settings. Go ahead and press OK here, and OK to close your options window. Now that we have the basic settings configured, we can see that we have a receiver here that is showing as connected. The total of messages we've received so far, whether or not there were any bad messages dropped, and the number of aircraft tracked. So now that we have this information, we want to plot this on a map so we can actually see everything that's going on in our area. And all we have to do is click on this little link here, this 127001 slash virtual radar. And this is going to open up the web page and plot all these aircraft onto a map for us. And from here, you can see we now have our virtual radar map showing several aircraft flying overhead in our area. Now, when you first get this up and running, you may need to adjust your location. Uh, currently, this is centered on my home location, uh, but you could be basically plotted anywhere in the world here. Easy way to set this is to go to your menu here, go to options, and then there's a section here that's um, called current location. So you can use a GPS location to set this if you have it, or you can set the current location, and essentially you just click on this set current location option, we close the menu, and we now have this little guy here that we can drop on our location. Once we've dropped it there, we go back into our menu, we go back into options, and we uncheck that. And this will now save your current location. So that way, every time you start your software, it already has you plotted in the correct spot. So before I go any further, big shout out to Sam, KF4GXM, amateur operator here who had actually suggested that I make this video. And so I wanted to just kind of give him a quick shout out here. I'll let you know that I certainly appreciate it. And I hope that this video is helpful to you. Um, before we go any further, I also want to show you here. So this is the antenna that I'm using. You can get proper ADS-B antennas, but amazingly, you can use something as simple as this. I just have it sitting on a piece of uh, metal pie tin here just to give it a nice little ground plane. And I am picking up aircraft sitting here inside my house. You get a proper antenna outside, um, you know, up with a clear view of the sky. You will be amazed how far you can see aircraft in your area. So I've now placed that antenna up just a little bit higher and you can already see a few other aircraft that are showing up. And if I zoom in a little bit, you'll see here as we click on the various aircraft, we can see how far they've traveled uh, since we've begun tracking them. We can see that this happens to be an American Airlines aircraft. We get the call sign as well as their distance from us, their squat code, their heading, their speed, their altitude. You really can get a whole lot of information about the various aircraft here. Um, if we look 
up this way, we can actually see an aircraft that is headed up toward Canada here. And so this one is an American Eagle craft. And we also get a nice photo of it here. So as long as you're online, you can pull up this type of information. Now, something you may notice as well is you may occasionally see aircraft pop up in this tracking list here, but you're not able to see them on the map. And the reason for this is that they simply haven't been transmitting their call sign, or maybe you haven't been able to receive the tracking or location data for them. So it's just displaying what it currently has available. It really just kind of depends what the aircraft is transmitting and what you're able to receive from your location. Uh, if you look here, you can see aircraft that are now so far away that I can't hear them are beginning to drop off my map as well. So that was just a quick and dirty rundown of what you can do here. I did want to pop into the menu real quick just to show you. If we go back into options, there is quite a bit you can do. You can set up information for your uh, data feed, how fast you want to do updates, uh, what type of units you want to display. Under your map, you get all kinds of options about, you know, do you want to auto-select the nearest aircraft? Do you want to auto-select aircraft furthest away from you? Would you like to change the colors of aircraft depending on how they're going to be plotted on the map? In the aircraft tab, we get more options, such as showing the altitude stock, which is basically a little bar on the aircraft that gives you a quick um, glance at how high that aircraft might happen to be. You can change what is on their label, so we can get a glance of the registration information, call sign, and altitude, or we can change that up. Maybe we want the call sign for flight level and distance. Uh, we can turn the aircraft trails on and off, and the trails are these little lines that appear behind the aircraft. Uh, so there's just a lot of options to kind of dig into here. You can create different lists of information that we want to be able to sort if we're looking for a specific type of activity in our area. And then, of course, filters where we can look for aircraft that are involved with a specific airport. Maybe we only want to look for military craft or a certain operator code. And it's a really flexible piece of software that can provide you some amazingly detailed information. And of course, the better your antenna and the better location for it, the more information you're going to be able to pull in. So this was just a quick and dirty rundown. I hope that this was something that was able to uh, provide you with some assistance in getting things set up here. I also wanted to give a big shout out to our newest Patreon uh, patron Joyce who joined at the $5 level and that was just you know greatly appreciated she's gonna have access to all of the videos on this channel early as well as a behind-the-scenes look at some of the stuff we do among some other perks that our patreon users get if you're interested in joining patreon take a look in the description below I'll have a link to my page there that goes through all the different things that I do for my patrons as a thank you for helping support the channel in return. So with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next one.